is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Welcome to sports, everybody. Team Bahamas with another medal opportunity earlier today at the second Youth Olympic Games in Nanjing, China. After winning a bronze in the 800 meter freestyle, swimmer Joanna Evans put herself in prime position for a podium finish in the 400 free after she won her opening round heat in 413.74. That was the fastest of all qualifiers. In the final, though, Joanna would come up short, touching the wall in 412.14. However, that was a new national record and a fifth place overall. Laura Morley, she was the final hope for a second swimming medal, but she finished her 200 meter breaststroke heat eighth in 236.42 and did not advance to the final. From tennis, Rashid Carey back on the court today as well with Simona Hynova of the Czech Republic. That was in the quarterfinals of mixed doubles. The duo needed a win to advance to the medal rounds, but they too came up short, losing 6-3 and 2. On to the track now, Dreshne Rule, the lone Bahamian in competition today. She ran the prelims of the women's 400 meter hurdles. She finished her heat fifth in 102.01, and that was good enough to qualify for the B final on Monday, where she will run out of lane number five. As for Sailor Paul D'Souza, he was unable to get any races in for the second consecutive day in the one man dinghy class because of inclement weather. They will try and get one final race in come tomorrow. Now, following the Youth Olympics, the next big event on the Bahamas Olympic Committee's calendar is the CAC Games set for November 14th through the 30th in Veracruz, Mexico. Four years ago, when the Commonwealth Games were held in November, the BOC found it hard to field teams because athletes had already shut their seasons down. But Vice President Roy Colebrook doesn't expect that to be big of an issue this time around. We have already put all federations on notice simply because of the time in which the CAC games will be held. I can tell you from me just having a conversation with some of the elite persons in track and field and so on that they want to attend. They want to attend the CAC, so we will have some of them. Also, you will find boxing, cycling, judo, taekwondo, which will be new and volleyball. Um, basketball is just awaiting to see if they get a pass. Uh, it will be a costly venture, but I'm sure the BOC uh, and probably partnering with the uh, Ministry of Youth and Sports will ensure that all of these disciplines are there to represent our country. Festivities for the Bahamas HBCU College Football Classic will take place September 12th through the 14th and the Ministry of Tourism is looking to take advantage of the cruise ship market four months to put this event together, to get marketing out there. With the success of these events and the interest that's being shown locally as well as internationally, it is simply for us to get the message to the cruise ships, ships in a timely manner. In fact, we'll be amazed at how many people will choose to come to the destination via cruise to coincide with an event such as this. So I, we're still we're getting the message out there, but I think this will be a major part of our marketing plan moving forward. Now, in addition to college football, the Sports Tourism Unit also has ties to pro football thanks to their partnership with the Miami Dolphins. And that collaboration will continue once again when the Finns begin their NFL regular season schedule on Sunday, September 7th at home against the New England Patriots in a major way that we have Bahama night, uh, we have music out there, so we are well, well represented. So any Bahamians out there, they will see us, and not just that, people who are attending that game, of course they get to see firsthand, they get to feel uh, our, our mu uh, music, hear it, and feel some of the culture, and of course it interests and intrigues them, and they want to know um, about the Bahamas. From pro boxing, after winning the vacant WBC Continental America's middleweight title last month, Toriano Johnson made it clear that he no longer has any aspirations to make that much anticipated bout with Jermaine Choo Choo Mackey a reality. And this is what Choo Choo had to say in response. Big Mo Dorino, uh, congratulations on your title. I'm happy to see that you won it, but don't believe you could beat Jermaine Mackey like that. Don't let the devil fool you, okay? Jermaine Mackey, there's no carbon copy. Congratulations on your first title. I've won four. I've fought for six. Frank Rutherford was in town a few weeks back trying to find a few more diamonds in the rough to take back to his elite athlete development program in Houston, Texas. For Frank, it's all about changing the mindset of these youngsters and making them believe they are capable of doing anything they put their mind to. I graduate from, from high school. Uh, I know Bob Ma is going to take 8000 or 13000 or whatever they say. 
But I want to put Bahamian kids in, in, in the position to own Bama. I ain't interested in the Bahamian just waking for Bama and waking for Atlantis and waking for the government. I want a Bahamian to own Bama, to take their true place in this country where they could become multi multi-millionaires and billionaires in this country. And the way it starts is through education. And we know a lot of these families don't have money to, 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 to college educate their kids in the United States. That's what the Frank Rutherford Foundation is all about. Softball enthusiast Carl Bang Bang Johnson will be laid to rest tomorrow in his native Eleuthera. The former manager of the Electro Telecom Lady Hitters and the BTC Ringers made quite an impact on everyone he came in contact with, especially those he had the opportunity to coach. Never a dull or dry day with him. He always pushed us and he always expected for us to give him our best. I, I guess all of you can remember seeing him when we make a play that he didn't like. He had this one pink hat that he would throw down and he would start, you know, rowing us. But we know that he did it in love. Whatever he did, he did it in love. He was excited to learn this game, but he didn't know he was going to take on a manager's role for the ladies. And we truly are going to miss him. We do love him. And may his soul rest in peace. I just want us to, to uh, let the life of Bang Bang teach us that we need to live life, enjoy life. We need to laugh and we need to love. We need to love one another. The ALS Ice Bucket Challenge has taken the world by storm. Nominated participants are filmed having a bucket of ice water poured on their heads in order to promote awareness of the disease and encourage donations for research. It's definitely a worthy cause, and our Kelsey Johnson took on the challenge yesterday to show her support. Ice Bucket Challenge. I, I nominate Candino Knowles, Oprah Roach, Christelle Brown, hmm, Chris Spin. Julian Gibson and Julian, you have to do this one on TV. And Jonathan Benson. And my donation, I will give fifty dollars to a boy and a girl for back to school. And you have twenty-four hours to complete this challenge. Twenty-four. On your mark. <laughs> So the challenge has been taken up by Candino and myself. In a couple of minutes, you will see that at the end of the newscast. We also have another special volunteer coming up there with us. You just have to stay tuned to find out who exactly that will be. And that will do it for sports. Stay tuned. The Bahamas Tonight is back after the break. This is ZNS Total Sports, brought to you by 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center.